The date is October 4, 1957. Something historic was about to happen. At around 7 pm, USSR launched the first artificial satellite into space. It was called Sputnik 1. And this marked the start of the space race. Before this, the space around Earth was pristine. It was empty. Now, a tiny metal ball no bigger than what you would toss around the beach started circling our planet. Pretty cool, right? Well, that one satellite has snowballed into something massive. Now, our orbit looks something like this. Today, we are tracking over 45,000 objects zooming around Earth at mind-blowing speeds. And those are just the ones we can see. There are millions more up there too small to track. Have you seen those before and after photos people love posting? Space has its own version. The before shows Sputnik 1 quietly orbiting Earth in 1957. For the after shot, however, imagine throwing the contents of a hardware store into a tornado. Yeah, that is what it is right now. Think about it. In just 65 years, we have turned Earth's empty orbital space into something that looks more like a teenager's messy bedroom. This is a video about how we got here and what the consequences are. Sputnik 1 started things off and it was up there alone for some time. But it did not stay that way for long. The space race kicked into high gear and suddenly everyone wanted their own satellite in space. Satellites and spacecraft kept going up. But here's the thing. They left behind some souvenirs. Ranging from spent rocket stages to loose screws. Even tiny flecks of paint. In 1963, Project Westford unintentionally contributed to growing problems of space debris. This project, which aimed to deploy millions of copper dipole antennas into orbit as passive reflectors for military communication, resulted in numerous small objects being scattered across a wide area of space. In 1985, the US tested an anti-satellite weapon that turned one satellite, named Solwind P78-1, into thousands of pieces. Later, commercial satellites began matching military-grade imaging capabilities leading to a significant private sector investments. Commercial satellites started showing up like tourists at a beach resort. By 2000s, the commercial satellite industry generated approximately $85 billion annually, with increased demand for satellite communication playing a critical role. But wait, there's more. Recent years have brought us something new. Mega constellations. Take the Starlink for example. They have already launched over 6,000 satellites and they are planning to bump that number up to 42,000. Sure, these satellites are super useful, but it is like adding thousands of new cars into a highway that is already jammed. Today, we are tracking over 45,000 objects up there and that is just what we can see. Millions of smaller pieces are moving around like invisible bullets. And when this thing collide, well, that's a whole another story we will get into next. Let me tell you a mind-blowing fact. In space, something as tiny as your fingernail could destroy a multi-million dollar satellite. This is not a joke. It is because to balance the gravitational pull and maintain a stable orbit, these satellites need to move fast. We are talking about kilometers per second fast. And when you are moving around 17,500 miles per hour, size of the object does not matter nearly as much as the speed. It is like getting hit by a bullet. Except the bullet is a paint chip traveling dozens of times faster than a real bullet. Just in March 2023, the International Space Station had to fire up the engines multiple times to avoid getting hit. As of 2024, it had to move out of the way more than 30 times. Imagine having to constantly dodge traffic. Except you are traveling at 17,500 miles per hour. The ISS is not alone in this space dance. Many active satellites have close calls with space junk every year. These near misses are not just safety issues, they are burning through the money too. Every time a satellite needs to move out of the way, it uses up precious fuel. And this fuel is limited. Trust me, there is no space gas station up there to refill the tank. Yet. But sometimes, even all that dodging is not enough. Back in 2009, we saw the first known hypervelocity collision between two intact satellites in orbit. A collision occurred between the active Iridium-33 satellite and the dead Cosmos-2251 satellite. And boom. Suddenly, we had 2,000 more pieces of junk to worry about. 
Now, here is where things get really interesting. Have you ever heard of the Kessler syndrome? It was proposed by a NASA scientist named Donald Kessler back in 1978. It basically says when two satellites or pieces of debris collide, they break apart into smaller fragments. Each of the fragments has a high chance to collide with other objects, generating even more debris, creating a chain reaction. You can picture it like this. Imagine you are playing pool. Every time the ball collides, they break into smaller pieces that keep bouncing around the table. That is basically what is said could happen in space. You get the picture. Okay, you might be thinking, well, this is a cool story, but why should I care? You should care because this space junk can disrupt your life. Allow me to explain. Think about your morning routine. Today, have you checked the weather on your phone? Thank a satellite for that. Use maps or GPS to dodge the traffic? Well, it's satellite again. Watch some Netflix last night? Yep, you guessed it. Satellites made that happen too. Those weather satellites that tell you whether to pack an umbrella or not are also the ones warning us about killer storms and natural disasters. Without this satellite, I don't think our lives would be so easy and convenient. Let's think about this for a second. What would happen if GPS went down for just 5 days? The UK economy would lose approximately 5.2 billion pounds. That is a billion with a B. And that is just one country. Imagine what would happen to others. It would be like pulling a Jenga piece from bottom of our technological tower. The whole thing could come crashing down. Okay, you may say this is no big deal. We'll just replace the damaged satellite. But the money side of things is pretty wild too. Want to replace a damaged satellite? Hope you have got a few million dollars lying around. And that is just for one satellite. The people keeping track of all the space junks are spending hundreds of millions of dollars every year just to make sure nothing crashes into anything else. It is like paying for the world's most expensive traffic system. When we think of long term and the things look even scarier, some of this junk could stay up there for years, decades even. And if we hit that tipping point, you know the pool table situation we talked about earlier? We might end up trapped on Earth. No more satellite launches, no more space exploration, and no more satellite TV. Space debris is like a messy attic. But instead of having old boxes and forgotten toys, it is full of high-speed metal scraps moving around at 17,500 miles per hour. Cleaning it up is not as simple as just grabbing a broom and being done for. It is more like trying to vacuum up a room full of flying knives. Still, scientists and engineers have some pretty clever ideas. The Remove Debris project, for example, has already tested a net in space. Yes, a net. Like the kind you use to catch a butterfly, only it is much cooler and way more high-tech. They have also tried a harpoon system. Imagine a harpoon flying through space to snag rogue satellites. Sounds straight out of a sci-fi movie, doesn't it? But it works. Then there's Clear Space 1, which is developing a robotic claw. Picture one of those claw machines at an arcade. Except, instead of pulling out a stuffed animal, it grabs a dead satellite and hauls it to a lower orbit to burn up in Earth's atmosphere. Ok, so what about the smaller debris? Well, scientists are cooking up plants to zap it with lasers from the ground. These lasers could nudge the tiny fragments out of the dangerous orbits. But technology alone won't save the day. This is not build a fancy gadget and call it done kind of problem. We need countries and companies to work together, making and agreeing on rules to prevent more junk from piling up. The European Space Agency's Zero Debris Charter is a good start, aiming to make sure future missions don't leave a trail of garbage behind. And here comes the catch. None of this comes cheap. Developing these cleanup systems costs big bucks, and there is no immediate payoff. Nobody is writing billion dollar checks to clean space. Yet, if we don't act soon, the cost of doing nothing will be even higher. Tackling the space debris problem will take a little bit of everything. From innovation, cooperation, and yes, the money. And we have to tackle this problem because the stakes are the future of space exploration itself. It is like solving a giant puzzle and every piece we put in place gets us closer to protecting the skies. The space junk problem is like letting your room get messy until the point where you cannot even walk through it anymore. Except, in this case, walking through it means launching new rockets and protecting existing satellites. Without any action, we risk turning Earth's orbit into a dangerous scrapyard. But don't panic yet. There is a hope and a lot of it. 
With smart technology, international teamwork and some common sense, we can tackle this challenge. Projects like Remove Debris and the Clear Space One show that we are figuring the solution out. Now it is about scaling up and making it all work together. This video was not meant to scare you with the dangers. It was more about informing you on how we got here and what is being done. And if you found this video interesting, then please hit the like button and don't forget to check out this video about whatever YouTube thinks you should watch next. Thank you for watching.